So what's uncertainty in principle? Uncertainty in principle, informally, what it says, it says that assume that we have some function in, uh, say, uh, over R from R, assume that we have some function F, say, from R to R, then what the uncertainty principle tells us that this function and its Fourier transform cannot be too much concentrated. And the name comes from actually from uh, physics. So the first where it's, uh, it was discovered by Heisenberg that says that you cannot have a function so that it looks like a very strong peak around some point and it's Fourier transform with function f and it's Fourier transform also have a very strong peak around another point. So this what's uh, called a uh, uncertainty principle it comes from physics from the uh, 60s I think uh, the this when it was the first discovered. So the, the, the mass statement as it is stated by uh, Heisenberg at the principle is the following. Heisenberg uncertainty principle and it stated the following. As for any function, a good enough function f, integral of x minus a squared f of x squared dx times integral of c minus b squared f hat of c squared dx uh, greater or equal to the force divided by 4 pi, I'm not sure about constant, ah, 60 pi squared. So what, uh, what, is, uh, so what, what is written here that if, if you have, uh, for example, f with uh, L2 norm, uh, which is one, then in this case, this function cannot be constrained around point A and it's for any, for every point A and B in R. So in this case, this function cannot be concentrated around the point, too much constraint around point A and too much, and uh, so that it's Fourier transform too much constraint around point, another point B. What's again? Constant, uh, 16 uh, pi squared. But it's uh, some constant. So this is uh, so what was uh, the first uncertainty principle, what, how it was. Uh, does, does it take IP in the R form to that, you know, that it's limited in the product. 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 It's at least. Yes, so. Yes, this and uh, in fact, this inequality tight and uh, Gaussian is uh, the distribution that uh, uh, when, is, uh, when it's uh, this inequality is tight. And uh, proving that Gaussian is uh, exactly the, the only place when it's tight is uh, leads us to another uncertain principle, which calls Hardy uncertain principle and which has uh, many other applications, but I will not probably I will not get into it. So. Uh, uh, this is uh, this is what we get, and this means that exactly that if you have a function which is uh, too much concentrated around some epsilon area of A, if you have some point A and it's uh, too much concentrated around this epsilon point area, then it uh, must be spread out. It cannot be con too much concentrated around any other point B, this uh, this dual. So, is it? Uh, Clear? Yeah. Okay. Uh, in this case, Fourier transform f hat of c is just integral from minus infinity to infinity of f of x e to the minus two pi i c x dx uh, modulo some normalization constant it is. 
Okay, so may maybe sometimes I forget uh, normalization because I want only to to be about. Okay, so the next question that uh, naturally to ask it's uh, what's about that if f has a different decay around uh, around uh, some point a. So can we generalize this uh, to a, to a different uh, norm or uh, or to a different uh, or to, to a different values and so in this case actually what what we can prove I just want to, to give a statement I will not going to to prove uh, here I'm going on I want to the plan for a talk is uh, to give an overview of uh, a continuous uncertainty principle and then go into the discrete uncertainty principle with a and then I'm going to give uh, all the proofs in, in the discrete case. So because I believe that it's computer science seminar it's most interesting is discrete uh, case for us. So in in case what we want uh, for uh, if if you want to to to, uh, to prove a certain principle with uh, other norms then one can uh, prove it for any p q greater than one and a greater than half minus one over p and b greater than half minus one over q exists some constant k so such that the following holds x to the power a f of x in the norm p plus c to the power b f hat of c in the norm q is greater or equal than k times so and uh, this i think it's due to Calling and and price from eighty four. So, so this uh, so we can actually I think it's v I think I just make some search over literature and this is probably the strongest statement when you can state about about any p and q. So. Ah, okay. So here, I okay, you are right. Here I can write x minus uh, a alpha x theta time minus beta. Okay. Is so it pure arbitrary or, or dual? Uh, arbitrary. Yes, it's enough to look at zero. Yes, because you can you can always shift uh, Fourier transform, so it's enough to look at zero. So this why I will uh, from here I will uh, usually omit this A and B. I, X minus alpha and C minus beta to the power sorry C minus beta to the power B. But uh, in general I will probably uh, usually omit this uh, constant. So. We can uh, ask this question, and then, of course, we can ask, can we have uh, the following situation? May it happen that we have uh, some function f, which is concentrated over one point, and it's dual, say, not concentrated over one point, but it's dual concentrated over uh, two points. So, and uh, actually, it's possible, it's possible to prove that this also cannot happen, and this is also, also a natural question, and... Uh, it's uh, possible to show uh, also a result uh, like this, that integral over any set E of f hat squared is less or equal than size of E uh, power to alpha divided by n x minus a to the power alpha f of x equal 
norm. And uh, this result uh, also from uh, for ah, it's alpha is uh, for any alpha less than uh, one over two n. And no, and here it's uh, and this is uh, and here ah this statement is for uh, for n dimensional case. Yes, f is a function. I, f is a nice enough function from R into R. It's uh, okay. So what what I'm saying is that if you integrate our fu our Fourier transform function over some s set E, then I this uh, integral cannot be too much high. Uh, this what 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 is written here, in fact. So when in this case this Fourier transform is uh, is bounded by some fun by some function of how E is uh, large. And uh, how is uh, how much is the f is uh, concentrated? So this uh, what it depends, and we can. X minus a. It's for every a. It's true. This equality true for every a. Oh, okay. So because all these uh, all these uh, things are invariant under shift, so. No, it's uh, x minus a because if f is too much concentrated over a, then this uh, this will be close to zero. Yes, here for f, so this is what I'm saying that you cannot have that uh, f is concentrated around one point uh, and. Uh, its uh, Fourier transform will be supported uh, over small set. This is what I'm saying. So in this case, if f is if this value is small, which means that f is uh, concentrated around point A, where it cannot be concentrated on small set E. Uh, no, okay, I, I can't tell what I found and I can't say that I didn't found any statement like this. I, 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 looked, uh, I looked for this and I cannot found it. I didn't found any paper which uh, cites uh, anything that uh, both function and its uh, Fourier transform can be concentrated around, uh, around some, uh, so can be concentrated around several points. So may maybe it can and yes. Yeah, Dokhanov Stark paper. It's uh, about okay. So here we are talking about uh, continuous. So uh, Dokhanov Stark paper is about uh, discrete Fourier transform. Uh, no, I, I looked at this paper. So there's no. It's it's f functions which goes from uh, some discrete group to R. Okay. <laughs> no, but but you are right. There is some in case where we are uh, going to. <laughs> when we can uh, we can so. So, but in c at least uh, in this, uh, so it's also not so clear how to state uh, the statement that uh, you cannot, so integral of f around, uh, so it's not clear how to state exactly this statement. So, I didn't found, I so, but maybe you can find something. I will not, I will, so it's actually what I want to say is that about the certainty principle in different papers, it's more than uh, 3,000 papers that I uh, saw. So it's, uh, you cannot uh, be sure that something is not quoted in any paper. 
Okay, so I can tell about what the best what I found. And uh, yes. Another, uh, so I want to say that another interesting uh, case where you can uh, also prove is the uh, uncertainty principle for uh, entropy uncertainty principle, which, okay, now I will probably switch to, which states in fact that uh, if you have uh, some function f, Then we can define define h of f as as an integral of uh, f uh, log of one over f, and uh, and it's possible to show that if you look on function f which is in R n, then Entropy of uh, f squared uh, plus entropy of f hat squared, uh, I think here is, uh, yeah, is uh, greater or equal than n ln e over 2. Uh, I think it's. Uh, yes, and here we did that L2 norm is 1. Uh, maybe. I'm not sure. But uh, here n is uh, the dimension of, uh, so uh, this comes because uh, in order, f uh, this comes actually from the fact that in order for function f to be integrable, it uh, must have a large entropy. So it must have a very large decay to zero at the infinity. So this why this n comes. This n is the dimension. So f is. Ah, it's yes. Yes. So in this case, it will be Gaussian. This will be probably the largest. So it will probably Gaussian. This. this. So actually, somehow, in the case of uh, in case of uh, R n, Gaussian distribution is a uh, tight example to almost all uh, statements that I uh, stated here. So and uh, this is what what we have. So now, now, okay. So now, what uh, what I want to say is that uh, Heisenberg uh, century principle was defined around 60s, and then uh, around 80s there was a big peak on uh, studies of uncertainty principle in mass. Uh, most uh, of these uh, studies comes from. Uh, the compressed sensing and uh, many other uh, data transmission uh, questions. So now what I want, I want to, uh, to switch to a discrete, uh, to a discrete case and uh, want to, to state the following uncertainty principle and even prove it. Ah, for this there is a discrete analog. Uh, for for any group. For any group there is a discrete analog, but in this case it's uh, just greater than zero. Zero. Uh, it depends somewhere here, yes. Yeah, yeah, there is. Yes. But, I'll, uh, okay, so what, uh, how it's, 
the following uh, theorem is by Delonso and Stark. And uh, what it uh, states, assume that we have uh, some function f from uh, some uh, abelian group A to, say, complex numbers. But in fact, what I'm going to say is also is also true for uh, functions f from any f uh, abelian group A to any field f. So for any function f from uh, abelian group to field f, we can uh, we can define Fourier transform. Uh, yes, but even without roots of units, you can define the uh, uncertainty principle. But I'm not. I and uh, the theorem states theorem states that support of a function f times support of a function f hat is greater or equal than size of a group A. Okay? So Uh, what is f hat? It's the same. You have a uh, root of unity. Okay. Let's assume for for a while that f has a root of unity. Uh, now in a few moments, I will make a generalization of this statement that holds for arbitrary field. But let's for now that assume that gamma to the power uh, m, when m is order of a, is equal to one, and you have gamma which is in f. Assume that you have uh, such gamma, then you can define uh, uh, m, m is order, m is order of a. It's the smallest uh, number so that uh, m uh, a equals to zero for every a in a. Uh, not necessary. F to the n when it's a two. It's order of <laughs> What? Yes, it's primitive with here. here. So, uh, uh, so I want, actually it's uh, probably it's even easier to show the proof than to define Fourier transform. So what, uh, what is the proof we're going to use? The proof going to use the following fact about Fourier transform. Uh, and the fact is the following, that uh, if you take f and make convolution with, uh, okay, maybe, okay, yeah, right. Then, and apply Fourier transform, then it will be f transform Fourier times g. Okay, so maybe it's better to define group algebra. Uh, so what's, so for any, any group uh, A and even non-abelian group G, we can define group algebra. So it's better just for use group algebra. Let G be any group. Then we have uh, the following uh, group algebra. It's uh, over any field. When over any field, we can define a group algebra. Then we have f of g is a vector space of size. It's a vector space of size dimension of g. It's a vector space which is uh, has a basis vector. It's a structure for vector space. Basis. I will uh, make a confusion, so I will hear uh, G I basis G G in G. So I will just write basis as uh, elements of uh, groups, and 
on this vector space we can uh, define a multiplication of uh, of two elements uh, by just uh, saying that if you want to say multiply sum of ci uh, gi by some element h then it's sum of ci gi h and then we can extend it also by linearity uh, to multiplication we can extend it by linearity just to sum of ci gi times sum of bi h i which uh, you, you can write it down but it's uh, not really interesting so in here, uh, convolution, it's mean multiplication in the group algebra. R here, G is a bad name for function. H. OK. So the function is what gives the coefficients of the Yes. The yes, the function is what is the, the, the function is the gives coefficients of uh, an element. Right. So Using this fact, what I want to say, I want to say the following. When claim from this fact following following claim, what is support of F hat? It's exactly the dimension of the following vector space of a vector space which is uh, defined by H star F H in H. So note that this is uh, here we fix some F and now look on all uh, on all uh, possible ways to multiply this f by sub function f h. So, and this I will use uh, usually denote by f of here it's a f of a uh, star f. Why is this claim? Uh, why is this claim true? Okay, so here it's uh, it's a very nice. So why 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 is it true? Because what what is this vector space? Okay, this vector space we can apply just Fourier transform. Fourier transform is an invertible function. So this vector space of H star f is a, a dimension of uh, this f of g star f, f of g star f is uh, equal to the dimension when we apply Fourier transform on every one of these functions of h hat pointwise f hat, h hat runs over all possible f of g. Yes, because it's invertible. Because uh, with if you take uh, invertible function on any on any space, then it preserves the dimensions of vector spaces. Okay, and what is uh, what is this here? We have uh, some we have some function with some support, and now we we are allowed to multiply it by any other function. So, and this is dimension of this uh, vector space will be exactly the support of F. The support of F hat. So, this will be exactly equal to support of F hat. Okay? So, excellent. Now, once we have uh, this claim, we can uh, make a, uh, the following statement. We can generalize actually, actually in this case, 
we can generalize uh, this uncertainty principle to any group and to any field, no matter if you have uh, roots of unity or not. And this claim a port of F times dimension of F of G star F is greater or equal to the size of G. But again, it's uh, usually it must it follows that once you generalize the theorem uh, enough, it, this theorem becomes trivial. So this is also the case here. You know, probably it's not generalized enough, <laughs> but not always. Okay, so now we claim that this claim is uh, trivial, and why is it? Let's look on what is uh, what is f of g star f. First of all, I claim that support. This has full support. Has. Support G. When I'm uh, saying support of vector space, I mean union of all supports of uh, functions in this, ve this vector space. Okay. So why is uh, this fu this uh, has uh, support uh, the whole space G? Because in particular we have here. Uh, yes, you, because you can shift by any any one of the vectors. Yes. On the other hand, this uh, vector space has the following basis. It, this vector space basis G star F. It's not basis, it's a span. Uh, G star F for G and G. Now, once we have uh, some, uh, some vector space spanned by uh, vector elements, we can find uh, we can prune it to make it a, a basis. So this is have a basis that this span equals to span of gi star f, where i goes from one to k, where k is uh, exactly the dimension of this vector space. Okay. Now, let's. Uh, what what is support of each of these functions? Support of each of these functions is equal to support of f. It's just shift of f by some uh, group element. It just equals to support of f, right? So, what uh, what we are uh, what we are uh, going to get here is that we have. Uh, we have some uh, vector space which has full support. On the other hand, it's uh, spanned by uh, k, uh, k basi basis vectors of support of equals to f. Therefore, the support of support of span of g i star f is uh, less or equal than k. I goes from one to k. Support of f. And remember that we have we, we said that uh, support of this is the whole group G. Therefore, we get that k times support of f is greater or equal to the size of whole group G. So it's it's a very nice, and it's uh, very nice that it's uh, you can generalize it uh, to any any field uh, to any field F, and uh, to any group. And uh, actually, when uh, when we are going to this, it's uh, turns out that it's very important with uh, for proofs. It's very important this principle when uh, actually s we, we go we're going to, for example, to prove the strong version of this principle over cyclic group. The way to do it is actually to prove this principle first over uh, field FP, and then uh, say that it also holds for uh, complex numbers. 
so and uh, this is probably the reason. Yes, uh, oh, when f is the coset of uh, oh, sub. Okay. Yes, so we, and actually you can see it actually from proof here. <laughs> because in order, okay, so you see that in order that uh, for this to be tight, we need that, we need, what we need, we need that uh, when we look on uh, this, uh, this vector space, we need that its basis will, uh, will be disjoint. And uh, this happens only when uh, when f is a cr uh, sub characteristic function of uh, of uh, sub subgroup of uh, G or coset of it. So let me let me write it down. This is this is tight uh, because if tight f is equal to one over h, one over h it's mean function which is one on the sub subgroup with h subgroup of G. In this case, you can easily see that uh, dimension of f of G star f is uh, just g divided by h, and uh, therefore this will be tight. So we c actually we cannot hope to improve this principle unless, if you as, as long as we have, uh, as long as we have subgroups. So the question, can we improve this uh, principle when we, we don't have subgroups? Uh, no. Um, yes, we expect to get something better, but uh, I don't. I, I don't know how to prove anything like this. So, in fact, uh, the question of uh, of improving of improving this is a very interesting question and it's, uh, very natural. So, but uh, I don't know about uh, any, anything about so like this. I don't think it's known. Yes. So there is uh, two ways to uh, actually. I want to say that there is uh, two ways uh, to improve this. To uh, first of all note that this associative principle will hold also when we have a uh, group. G acting, this appears in, uh, no, Goldstein, G acting on X, uh, and uh, X is uh, maximal. So X is G divided by H, where H maximal. This eliminates uh, the counterexamples uh, for this to be tight. And then uh, in paper by Gold, Goldstein, uh, Ralik, and Isaac, right? So uh, in this paper, uh, it's it's, it was proved when uh, when h is maximal. So in this case, we don't have these counterexamples, and we hope that we are able to improve this. But unfortunately, the only what we can uh, get is uh, the following, that support of uh, f times uh, uh, dimension, uh, dimension of f of g. Yes, f, f of x. And uh, here it's uh, just, uh, the just the model which is generated by this function f. In this case, actually, what we can prove pro only with this constant 2, and this is again tight. 
And this tight because if you have uh, two transitive groups, then we can construct example where it will be tight. What? G act on X. G acting on X and we take, uh, so in some sense we take maximal subgroups. So in order to elim eliminate all, uh, in order to eliminate all possible uh, counterexamples with uh, like this one over H. No, f, f is function of X. So in this case, in this case, we have function, uh, we have function f from x to say c. Okay, so and we so it's in some sense it's a g, so we have some gene variant uh, code. So a code which is uh, we have g which acts on x, and then if we permute coordinates of f according to g, we still get a function which is in our module. And this what will uh, uh, gives us uh, this is a stability point. Okay. Wait, wait, I want to say that this the proof that I presented uh, here for uh, this theorem is not uh, uh, due to the long going start. I think it's appeared in your paper or it's before. I don't know, but. Okay. So I think it's. Uh, appears in this paper, uh, this proof appears in this paper, but maybe I think it's uh, somewhere before citing some private conversations, but I, 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 I'm not sure about it. Okay, so uh, now what uh, what I want to say is, okay, so let's maybe prove this uh, uncertainty principle for a case where, uh, for a case of uh, FP. In this case, what we can prove Okay, let me erase. Yes. Um, okay, in some sense, uh, if, uh, proving such things for C usually easier. So usually when you have some uh, uh, such statement over C, you, we can, uh, it's also true. Uh, so in this case, it's, if you have some state, such statement true over a finite field, it also applies uh, that this statement is true over uh, C. Usually, that, uh, it's not. Uh, no, not really. But in fact, uh, in fact, uh, the, 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 the funny thing that what we are going to do now is to prove strong uncertainty principle in fine characteristic which do divides uh, the group size, and then show that this implies uh, it's over C. And this proof uh, I think I found in two papers. One is this paper and another is paper by Frankel. Another is Frankel. And, uh, and I think it also appears here. I'm not sure which was first. And so, and uh, what, uh, what we are, uh, uh, going to, to, to show is the following that. So then, so in essence, what you are trying to explain to me is the fact that in this situation, the general situation, it's possible that there's also support of the function and support of the transformer about square roots of 
Yes. What? Yes. So, so in this case, uh, actually, yes. So in this case, what we have, we have it support of f plus support of f hat is greater or equal than uh, twice square root of g. And uh, uh, the question is, can we improve this? Yes. Yes. And uh, now it was also, it was first, I think it's uh, noticed by tau, but okay. So it's also, so it will follow is that support of f plus support of f hat greater or equal than uh, p plus 1 for g equals to cyclic group cp and uh, f equals to complex number c. What? Oh, okay. Yeah, it's uh, it's tau. It's uh, it's uh, depends who you ask. And so I'm I, I, I usually I don't like to get into these issues. So I go to mainstream. Ma many people are uh, in literature somehow address this theorem to tau, but I agree with you that it's not definitely not. So now how we are going to prove uh, this theorem? We need the following, uh, we need the following lemma. Let F be function of degree less than uh, p. In this case, multiplicity uh, be a polynomial. In this case, support, okay, support of function f is greater or equal than multiplicity of f at one. So in the complex polynomial. It's uh, any polynomial. Uh, coefficients in any field. As long as. No, but this is actually what I want to prove is over FP. Okay. I will use it over FP, so but it's for it's, it's true for every field. From from what? From F P to F P. Univariate. Mm -hmm. <coughs> multiplicity. If uh, I, I say that multiplicity of f is uh, uh, k, if uh, okay, I say that multiplicity of f at one is k. It's by definition is. Impl that f of one is zero, f dot of one is zero, f double prime of one is zero, f k at one is zero. Okay.
uh, yes. But it's, the proof is very simple. We are going to prove it by induction. First of all, uh, it's trivial that if you have uh, multiplicity uh, multiplicity one, then support of f will must be at least two. But if you have uh, that if f of one is uh, zero, this implies that support of f is greater or equal than two. This is trivial because uh, because x to the power n is uh, never zero at one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes. Because if it's zero, it means that f of one is not two. So the support of f is at least one because it's one is not two. That's the base. Okay. But that statement is wrong. If f of one is zero and f prime of one is non-zero, then the support of f is greater than two. So I assume that f is not zero always. Okay. Let's. F is not zero. If I'm not right, it's here. Okay, because if you take uh, any, any function with support equal to one, then it will be not zero at one. Because it's uh, function with support equals to one is mean that it's function x to the power n. Ah, support, maybe I have to, support of f is number of non-zero Zero coefficient. <laughs> okay. 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 Sorry. Now how? Uh, now how we are going to prove uh, to prove this statement? Okay, so now assume that. What's the case? Oh, oh, then it won't be zero at uh, one. Zero at one. Okay, so. What, uh, so what we need to prove, we need to prove, assume that we know this for k minus one, and we want to do so that this implies for k. So assume that we have the, some function f, which is, uh, say, sum of ci x to the power i, x to the power a, yes. First, what I want, I want to divide this function f by uh, the uh, highest uh, possible uh, uh, power of x that I can. So let's so first of all, f divided by x to the power i has the same support, has same support and multiplicity. Multiplicity as Yes. So, without loss of generality, c zero is dot zero. And now, what I'm going to do? I'm going to derivate uh, function f. Now, in this case, f prime of x has 
multiplicity k minus 1 at 1 and therefore f prime of x support support of f prime of x is uh, greater or equal than k. And since uh, we assume that C0 is not 0, support of f prime of x is uh, by 1, at least by 1 less than uh, support of uh, f. Therefore, support of f of x. Okay, so far we have, uh, so this interesting for, for uh, polynomials from FP to FP, uh, but uh, as it is stated, it's true for uh, any field. Ah, yes. Because, because x to the p is uh, one. So, uh, What's the case? L less than p or uh, less or equal than p minus uh, 1. So now what I want to say, okay, first of all, what I want to say that this lemma, in fact, equivalent to this, theor uh, to this stroke theorem for, uh, for field FP. Why is it? Claim that this lemma, so what, it's uh, just observation, that this lemma, in fact, is uh, a equivalent uh, to, uh, in this level equivalent to this statement when uh, f is uh, fp. So let me write it down. So what uh, what is uh, this lemma equivalent? This lemma equivalent to following that. Support of f plus the dimension of f of cp fp of cp convolution of f greater or equal than uh, p plus 1 yes uh, i didn't uh, i did i didn't vote about but definitely yes i didn't vote about so, and uh, why is this? Because uh, the co-dimension of, uh, of this space is exactly, so what, 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 what how, how can we look about of, of this fp of cp? It's f of x divided by x to the power p minus 1. Yes, it's uh, just uh, this. Over fp, this is exactly equal to f of x divided by x minus 1 to the power p. 
right? So if you are looking on the f of x divided, and now if you are looking on the, if you are looking on the, what is the model which is generated by function f, it's uh, exactly, uh, not model. So what I'm claiming is that dimension of f of p of cp is exactly with gcd of uh, f and x are p minus 1. And then here I think it's p minus x, right? Plus minus one here. Uh, right. So this dimension is exactly uh, p minus GCD of f x to the power. So. Degree, degree, sorry. Exactly. P minus degree of GCD of uh, F and X to the power of P minus 1. And uh, this is actually, in fact, a uh, general statement. If you are uh, looking on uh, some, uh, if you are uh, looking on some f of x divided by h of x, and uh, we are looking about uh, what is, uh, what, uh, so we are looking on uh, this, uh, on uh, this model, then it will, uh, this will be, so it's easy to see that this will be the model which is generated by GCD of F and H. So it will be GCD of FH times F of X. So v, uh, divided by H. So this will be, so in its uh, co-dimension will be exactly with GCD. Because uh, if you are uh, looking on uh, this function f, when any, when any multiplication of f by any other function will contain this uh, GCD, and it's easy to show, show that this is exactly what the whole thing. Okay, so this is uh, Uh, it's yeah. Okay, so in fact, this is actually we are going to prove the main theorem. Probably it's easier to use this lemma rather than. Uh, okay. So. Yes, but in fact, okay, so in fact, what I'm going to say is that uh, once we have, uh, once we have proved uh, the strong theorem over uh, for uh, some, uh, for some prime uh, number, we can, uh, we can lift this theorem to the complex numbers uh, over C. And it's a very, it's a very nice, uh, it's a very nice argument. Uh, unfortunately, it's not always work. But in this case, it works. Okay.
No, it's it once again. No, I was saying you, that you, you just put this question to this one. Yes. Okay. So question twelve. This we would like it to be the supporting question. Ah, uh, it's uh, it's not defined over FP. So F hat is not defined over FP. Yeah, so it's equal uh, in the sense that I told that uh, I defined, in fact, it's, it's, it's in some sense, in case that when f hat is not uh, defined, I would define it this way. So I defined it, it to be s support of f hat to be dimension of this space. So it's not always defined. In fact, for, uh, for non abelian groups, it's uh, easier to define this because for non abelian groups, you can. Uh, say, look on uh, representations of this group and they defined in terms of representations, uh, the support. And this will be e also equal by these uh, techniques, but I want to keep things simple, so I'm not going into this. So now I'm uh, going to prove this, uh, 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 this claim. And uh, first of all, I want to say first, we can assume without, so we have, so what, what this claim says, uh, we have some function f, F in C of FP, C of CP, cyclical. We have uh, some function F, so it's we, we c we the best thing to think about this function is a function is a polynomial of degree less than P, and uh, F hat is uh, and now take gamma to be e to the 2 pi i divided by p. So it gamma is just root of unity, uh, p's root of unity. And now f hat, f hat of i is just f of gamma to the power i. What? Ah. <laughs> okay. So here I want to say that uh, it's a very nice uh, observation that uh, somehow the, the, the function and its Fourier support, it's exactly the trade-off, uh, the interplay between how the function looks as a polynomial and how the function looks as a, as a function. So it's exactly this, uh, this trade-off. So and now if you, what you want to show that uh, if you have a Function f with, uh, with, s with small support, then this function will have a small number of zeros. Okay? Well, well small number of zeros. Yeah. That number of zeros is, uh, is, is the support of function f. So, uh, how are we going to, s to do it? First of all, what I'm going to say is that we can assume without loss of generality. So now it will be a little bit f is in q of gamma of x. So now we think about f is a function, is a complex, uh, low degree complex uh, function. Now what I'm saying is that we can assume without loss of generality that f is in q gamma. Why is it? Because, uh, okay, so it's uh, sometimes it's, it's obvious, but C is a vector space, vector space over Q gamma. And now if uh, we, we write uh, coefficients in, uh, of uh, F in, a, in, in some basis over C, so we have, so assume that we have uh, F of some gamma to the power I equals to zero. And F have coefficients over C. Then if you restrict our coefficients to elements, uh, to projection on some basis element, then it also will be, will be true. Okay, so what we have, we have uh, here is a sum of, uh, say, uh, Aij, uh, Bj, it's a, uh, uh, J uh, here is a sum of finite sum, and Bj is a basis of uh, C over Q gamma. 
Okay, so if you have a, a, this is this will be our coefficient uh, AI. Okay, it will be our coefficient AI, and we, we define F to be sum of AI x to the power I. In 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 this case, if uh, if f of gamma to the power uh, some k is zero, when when uh, when when we write it, it will it's exactly mean that sum over uh, j a i j b j uh, times uh, gamma to the power uh, k uh, i and sum of i is equal to zero. <laughs> and therefore, it's uh, also true for every, so therefore, it's because bj are, is a basis, which is independent. This is lies in uh, q gamma, and this lies in q gamma. So therefore, we get, take any j, say b1, and then for B1, we get, for example, so it's by definition. And then for B1, for example, what we get, we get that B1 times sum of A I1 gamma to the K equals to zero. And this gives that uh, polynomial which defined by AI1 is uh, the polynomial which is zero on the same gamma as uh, F was. So it's. So why is it finite? Uh, because it's a basis. Basis is a finite sum. Basis may be infinite, but uh, we basis, basis itself is infinite, but uh, the definition of basis is that every element can be written as a finite sum. It's. Okay, so you can you, you can ignore it. You can just uh, say that without loss of generality, f in q gamma of x. Okay. So just sometimes it's maybe not, and usually it's uh, all all interesting questions we uh, will have with f in q gamma, or in. No, but what I'm saying is that if uh, uh, so, what I'm saying is that if you can if you can show this for uh, Q gamma, then we can show it for uh, when it follows from C for C. Because uh, the numbers of the number of i's for each uh, f uh, hat of uh, i is uh, equal to to zero is. Uh, over C is less than for this for this polynomial is less than we take any projection or any coordinate. So this what I'm saying. But what? But it's it's really about so somehow about loss of generality. Okay. So now also without loss of generality, loss of generality, f is in uh, z of gamma of x. And this because we can just multiply by common denominator and uh, get polynomial which is in uh, z of gamma of x. And now it's trivial. Why it's trivial? So now consider the following mapping from z of gamma to fp. And mapping is a gamma mapped to one. Okay. And, uh, so first of all, we need to 
to, to see that this, uh, this is indeed the uh, homomorphism of, uh, of uh, rings. So, and this follows because uh, the minimal polynomial of gamma, minimal polynomial of gamma is uh, f of gamma, which is zero. Minimal it's for f of x, which is sum of x to the power i. I goes from zero to p minus one. Okay. And therefore, if we are, uh, so what we have, we have here the mapping from zx divided by fx, and which maps x to 1, and this is indeed mapping to fp. Because in this case, f, f of 1 will go uh, will goes to 0 here. This is what we need to check. And uh, this is indeed a mapping. And now... The question, what this mapping will, uh, will uh, do for our polynomial? Now we have polynomial over, uh, we have polynomial in Z gamma of X. And now we apply our mapping Psi and we look at Psi of F, which is polynomial F in FP of X. Uh, now, note, what's, what's happening? Uh, phi of f is what? Phi of f, I'm applying so just... You just apply the mapping. Just apply the mapping on every coefficient. Okay? So now the coefficient is in FP. Is uh, in FP. Yes. Now every coefficient is in FP. And now what's, uh, what's happened? Uh, gamma goes, to, uh, so gamma goes to one. And uh, because it's homomorphism of the rings, also gamma to gamma gamma to the k, phi of gamma to the k is also one. Okay, so now what I claim is that if uh, f hat has k zeros, then phi of f has uh, multiplicity k at one. Okay, it's. Uh, If f has k zeros, then multiplicity of f at one is greater or equal than k. Why is it? Because if f has uh, k zeros, then uh, what we have? In case that f has uh, f of x has k zeros, uh, then it's mean that f is product of x minus uh, gamma to the power i times sum uh, gamma to the power ai, i goes from 1 to k, times sum h of x. And after applying uh, psi, psi on f, we get that it's product of x minus 1 times psi of h of x. i goes from 1 to k, which is exactly x minus 1 to the power k. And uh, now the claim follows from the lemma. Because uh, if f has k zeros, then by lemma, support, by lemma we know that support, so by by lemma support of uh, support of uh, psi of f is greater or equal than and we are done so just to check that we check that uh, we are done uh, we know that number of number of zeros here 
uh, is uh, so support of f hat is exactly p minus number of zeros. So thus we get that uh, support of f plus support of f hat is uh, p plus one. And uh, ah, and this mapping can only reduce the support of f. Because uh, it's zero, zero maps to zero. Okay, so thus we are done. Is there proof of that? Oh no, there are. Uh, yes, Tau's proof was very difficult. It's. Yes. So is there some sort of robust way to do this? What do you mean robust? I mean, instead of saying, instead of looking at the support, you look at the like set on which the absolute value is bigger than the maximum. Yes. There is a robust, uh, there is a robust version and there is about, uh, about 10 papers which, which at least I saw that has discussed with uh, robust versions. Uh, what? Yes, uh, uh, but we, so they have the whole star has a robust version that, uh, okay, so I, uh, I will tell about several things about robust version, it's a good question. So uh, the star has also a robust version that say that if uh, outside of, uh, so which is actually says that if F uh, has uh, its all uh, distribution or the sub small set except sub epsilon fraction, where you get uh, the f hat also has uh, support uh, except sub delta fraction where you also has uh, this that uh, oh i think it was maybe it will i'm not sure probably probably l2 was uh, probably l2 they used l2 so, but in this case, you have uh, also that uh, product of this uh, two, s two sets is at least G times a factor of G pairs of the epsilon delta. <laughs> what? Uh, no, I'm saying about uh, the Doho and Stark, which is uh, which which holds for any for any for any group. Uh, and uh, where there was a uh, work by Cadiz and Tau, which uh, ask uh, exactly this question. So assume that we have a uh, sub function and uh, can, can, we, can we have a robust version of this? Uh, can, we, can we assume that we have sub function f, which is sparse? Can we reconstruct this function from uh, several uh, measurements of its uh, Fourier transform? And uh, actually, they uh, showed what what we have showed is that uh, if you have uh, if, if if you have some function f as sparse, well, okay, depends on how you define. The, so, for well, for m most choices of. Uh, as f lives in uh, c or say r of uh, any abelian group a i think abelian zf so it's uh, yes so in, in in this case yes but it has only as as values then in this case, uh, by measuring, uh, when by measuring uh, S log M, here's a constant, uh, measuring S log M uh, coefficients F uh, hat of Xeta for ra for random xetas, uh, we will with high probability we will be able to reconstruct f by using L1 minimization uh, minimization program. 
So this was one, and there was another uh, which is a stronger version of this that if you use, put here instead of this log four, then uh, it will, by measuring the S log four M, we will be able to reconstruct every S sparse function. Not just random, but every. And uh, it's interesting whatever uh, this for is uh, necessary or not. So this is the uh, It's, uh, so if you have some errors uh, in F, then it will, it's L1 minimization. So L1 minimization is. Uh, It's you the number of tensor I'm just wondering if it works when not as sparse as when it's close. Yes, it works when it's only close to as sparse. Yes. <laughs> and uh, but I didn't read uh, this paper, so I'm not sure. But at least the claim sh says that it uh, works also when it's uh, close to as sparse. Um, Ah, I want to show, okay, what I want to say is that uh, why it's, for example, it, this claim is inter so interesting for computer science. One of the reasons is that uh, consider the following code. Uh, yes, uncertainty principle. Why it's uh, uncertainty principle in general is, uh, is uh, so in some sense for me, it's uh, sometimes easier to think about uncertainty principle in terms of uh, error correcting codes. So, and what is written actually in uh, uncertainty principle? We can treat it in many ways, but for example, one of the examples is that, uh, one of the examples uh, what, why it's uh, interesting is that, let's write here F and let's write here F hat. Then what uncertainty principle claims is that Minimal distance of this code is at least that distance of uh, f chick. f hat of this code is at least p plus one. Half yes, half the legs, and it actually matches. Uh, this actually matches the uh, uh, singleton bound. So it means that we cannot do anything better. So my code is all, all, my code is the following. My message, message fu function f. And I encode it by telling you what is function f, writing it down just as is, coefficients, and then writing a, a f, a coefficients of f hat. So where, what, what is the function? Is the, is the complex function? Yeah, it's. Yes, it's a complex it's number. It's a complex factor. Yes. You can, you know, it's true over a fee, but over a fee, it's dimension. So I would like to say it's over a fee, but uh, I cannot. There is no definition of head. Uh, so. Uh, no. So uh, this is actually, so uh, the actually you are right. So this is a code over a complex, uh, complex number over a field with characteristic zero. So I think a very interesting question is uh, can you prove uh, this uncertain principle for finite fields? Okay, first of all, before stating this question, you. You can, for it, 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 as usually it holds, if you take uh, characteristics to be very large, it's true. But it uh, have to be exponentially large. But uh, I don't know of any, anything that will, uh, co uh, that will uh, counter examples that over any field, over any field, Uh, 
support of f plus support of f hat is greater or equal than p divided by some constant. Uh, for so yes, as long as, so you have a field with the roots of unity of order p, and then you can define this code. And uh, in this case, I conjecture that uh, this should hold. In general, uh, the strong version you can construct counter examples to strong versions. And in fact, uh, it's uh, the counter examples uh, over five fields to strong version. It's something which leads uh, to the first construction of locally decodable codes. And, uh, and uh, it's inside. So you have you had uh, were polynomial of three monomials, which has many zeros over F2. So and in fact, somehow many times, so many times, uh, Counter examples to uncertainty principle leads to good uh, locally decodable codes. So, <laughs> no, here I want not counter example. Here I want, I conjecture that this is true. And, uh, yes. For some uh, constant. What's the case? Yes, here I wrote complex polynomial and I wrote its say, coefficients and then I wrote its evaluation of this polynomial or the, uh, on the, I wrote its, this, all, all evaluations of this polynomial on roots of unity of order P. So here it's with evaluations of polynomial of or the roots of unity of order p. So I take polynomial of degree p, and when I write its coefficients, and when I write its evaluations of, of uh, or the roots of unity. So note that if you take polynomial of degree d and just write its evaluations, then it's uh, exactly read the solvers. <laughs> yes, but it's some generalization, and I think it's uh, it's extremely interesting. Another question that I think it's is extremely interesting: Can you lo uh, least decode this code? So you, you know, from we, we showed that uh, this code has a distance uh, p plus one. So, and this means that uh, you can uh, unique decode this uh, code as long as number of errors is less than p plus one divided by two. Give, uh, can we give an algorithmic uh, decoder for this question? I, I don't know, it, uh, it may be hard. So to give a, uh, another question, so can you least decode this code? Do you have a list decoder? So we know, uh, so it may happen that uh, after making, uh, say, we have some function f, pick f hat, and now we add here noise. We add here noise of size, uh, of size uh, p plus one times one minus epsilon. May, uh, can you find a small list of, uh, or can you prove there, there is a small list of uh, functions which are uh, close to this? And from Johnson Bow, did you, uh, so can you prove Johnson Bow? No, it's ob it works here. No, I'm saying, so can you prove it? So the question, there are two questions. Can you find it or does it possible to improve it? Bec why? So I believe it is possible to improve it because it's uh, too much similar to read Solomon codes. And read Solomon codes uh, without uh, in some extent to improve it. And I believe that this is even more uh, plausible that it's possible to improve. <laughs> yes, but here it's... Uh, I don't, I don't, be, so we, I know that in of our final field it will not uh, be uh, single so far. This, I don't, uh, some, some no, no, but, but no, 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 over seats. Because over, so over five fields it's, uh, I think it's uh, pretty, it's much different. 
I will be like to see if you can describe the result. I thought about this. Uh, and I did found uh, any description of this as a result. It looks very similar. And each time you think about it, you think it's possible, but I cannot find a description of this as a result. Um, another reason why it's uh, interesting is because assume that you have a subcode which is a G invariant, okay? And assume that C is some G variant, G invariant code. In this case, if we can find uh, in this code C some element with a small support, then it's, uh, it's, it will imply that the dimension of C will be, uh, must be large. Usually what you, when these questions arise and when we want to prove that some code is locally testable or something like this, then dual, we want that it will, uh, will have uh, element with small support. And uh, in, in, in this case, we know that the dual must be large. And this somehow uh, gives us possible limitations or the possible or the gene variant codes with a small supported dual. Because if C is G invariant code, then uncertainty principle, what it tells us, if it has a small support, then dimension of C must be large. Okay, so uh, the basic uncertainty principle tells us that dimension of, uh, dimension of uh, C plus support of F Plus type greater or equal to this. Yes, yes. It's a it's a code word, right? Yes. 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 But you know, improving and understanding this uh, principle for uh, for uh, finite fields and for other say of, uh, G, which is a finite group, uh, it's uh, it's a very interesting question because it's exactly the question where the code C may be a fine locally testable code. It's exactly the question. It's, it's exactly the question of uh, it's exactly the question of uh, proving uncertainty principle for non abelian groups. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. Uh, another example which I also very like is. Uh, Proof of uh, cauchy davenport So it's a, it's a very nice example. Wha one of the things that follows from here. Is the following. Let. Imply. Yes. A certainty principle applies cauchy davenport and assume that you have two sets A and B, subsets of FP, then the size of uh, A plus B, when we take any element from A and plus any element from B, is greater or equal than, than minimum size of A the size of B minus one and B. So it means that if you take any two subsets of FP, then it will be at least uh, the size of these two subsets minus one, unless we have uh, trivial bound. Yes. Yes. 
So how, how we are going to prove this? Okay, let's take, let's look on all functions f, f has support. What what? f has support a. And the, let's look function g has support b. Now what, what else I want from f? I want that f, what, uh, what f will have, what I want that f hat will be zero on u. For some u, uh, for some u uh, where size of u is the uh, size of a minus one. I claim that for any u I can, uh, I can find such f. And this is just follows from linear algebra. Because number of uh, dimension of uh, uh, functions f support a is uh, exactly the size of uh, a. Therefore, I will uh, find uh, and uh, to be zero on uh, every point at, at uh, f hat, f hat at every point at u is one linear constraint. Therefore, uh, I have uh, size of a minus one linear equations in uh, n variables. Therefore, I have uh, one non-trivial solution. And note that. Uh, um, at most a. At most a. But uh, note that uh, once we have these two constraints from uncertainty principle, it follows that uh, it will be exactly a and exact, uh, exactly u. I, I, I have root scaling. So I take f in uh, f is from f p t c. And uh, G has support of uh, and, uh, G hat will be zero on V with the same si size. V is the size of B minus one. And uh, additional, what I want, what I choose A and U and V so that U intersection V is trivial. And uh, as long as uh, this is less than p, I can do it in case it's greater than p. The same thing, you just take everything except one. So I'll, I'll just concentrate that on this case, on this minimum on this, okay? So now what's happened? Let's consider on what is f convolution with g. Uh, it's support of f convolution with g is in A plus B. It's subset of A plus B. Right? On other hand, on other hand, what, what I want to say with support of F plus, uh, what is support of, support of F convolution with G hat. And this is exactly support of F hat times G hat. It's point wise product of F convolution with G because uh, almost by definition, because uh, we have uh, F is uh, on A when When you convolve with, uh, with uh, one, one on uh, some point B, we just shift it by B. Okay? So now support of F convolution with G hat is a product of support of F and G. Therefore, it's just CP minus U union V. And now we conclude this, that from uncertainty principle that A plus B, this is exactly, the size, the size of this set is exactly P minus A 
minus b plus 2. Therefore, from this, we conclude that uh, support, support of this is greater or equal than p minus uh, a plus b minus 1. From this, this and the ZRT principle, so star, two stars, plus a strong and ZRT principle implies that uh, size of A plus B is greater or equal than size of A. So it, it's it's very simple, very nice, I very like it, and uh, this is also like uh, trying to understand when uh, when this this is uh, when this uncertain principle is uh, tight, it exactly gives us uh, the way to analyze what. When you add, uh, add up two subsets, wh when it will be large. So I found many papers uh, like trying to analyze this, but I think it's. So what we know, for example, from uh, Tau's work, that if you take set A, when for uh, if you take uh, any uh, any l large by log factor set, then it will be good for most uh, sets A. But trying to analyze this, <laughs> so what I'm saying is that for most uh, so you c you can reconstruct so if you know f hat on uh, size of a times log n uh, places, then you can reconstruct uh, subtract function f. And uh, somehow try to uh, understand this, you can uh, get better understanding of the... So if you can understand for which sets the stronger set of the principle holds, we can understand uh, we can understand for which sets A plus B has expanded properties. <laughs> it holds for every in uh, FP, in FP, but uh, say in ZM. As they have told that if it's maybe if it's uh, far from uh, from uh, if it's far from being uh, one on a subgroup, then it uh, must hold, and it's probably true. But uh, to prove it and to understand it, it's uh, it's uh, pretty hard. There was uh, some works which uh, shows that if uh, say product of uh, AI minus AJ divided by product of i minus j is uh, not in n p1 plus n p2 and so on when uh, when we are looking over uh, over cm you uh, m equals to p1 times p2 and so on if you have, uh, and AIs are just uh, the coefficients of monomials, if it's uh, not, this product is not in this set, then you can uh, prove that the uh, strong uncertainty principle holds. So uh, it's, whose result is it? I don't remember. <laughs> it's no, it's not a general, it's a pretty hard result, no, which. But suppose there is only one class, which is. Yes. Uh, ah, in this case, it's uh, said that it's strong in certain principle. Yes, in this case, it's true because in this case, it's just NP1 and all these are core prime uh, to P1, so it will not be there anytime. Yes, because it's uh, less than P and they are non equal. No, it's uh, monomials. A AIs are uh, support, so support of F. Support of F is the set of AIs. And uh, for example, uh, one can when one can a little bit improve. Uh, there is a result of Mishulov, and actually it also follows from this result. 
which a little bit improves uh, which a little bit improves uh, the Lohengrin Stark for uh, general groups for CM, and in fact, what it proves so. What we know, we know that here it's support of F, here is support of F hat, here is say M, here is one, here is M. Then strong uncertainty principle tells us that this is on only possible uh, options. <laughs> the honor in Stark tells us that this is only possible option. So and uh, what we prove that we have and we have here some counterexamples, right? So we have uh, here some counterexample, here some counterexample for different uh, subgroups, and uh, there is a result of Mishulam which proves that if we take this, then in fact this is only possible option. So it somehow makes uh, convex hollow this point. So we can somehow improve it, but not too much. Uh, yes, but what I'm saying is that it's interesting to understand. Uh, it's interesting to understand because maybe so you know it's uh, you can improve, but still you can improve, improve here. No, no, Yes, but it's interesting to understand uh, for which groups, for uh, what actions, uh, you can uh, you you can prove uh, something like this. And uh, this what what we know. Okay. What else do I want? So I wonder. Why, what's again? Why can't? Why you and B? Because we're dealing with the case of the minimum and zero zero. So, so B minus one is less than one. So, in, in this, so I'm uh, dealing with this case. In this case, I can uh, just just pick two, two disjoint sets because uh, they, are not, uh, they are not too high, they are less than P. And it doesn't matter what which sets you and the V you are picking. Okay, just uh, okay. So um, okay, I will uh, probably stop here. And, uh,